Well, God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you one more time. Rev Andy here. Where y'all at? Oh, yeah, we are a little late today. Amen. A lot of ministry this morning, but wake up. Come on, we're here now. Are you out there? Rev Eddie here. There you are. I thank God for each and every one of you that are following this podcast. Amen. That the Lord has drawn here. And just know in your heart, we love each and every one of you. And we thank God that the Lord drew you here. And we want you to know we got you. We got you. Nothing but the truth comes out of this ministry. Amen. And boy, do we have a podcast today. Oh, we're going we gonna to light it on fire. Amen. Where's my kids? There they are. Oh, they already know. We were talking in the back. They were stuffing their faces with double-stuffed Oreos and jukeboxes. But they're very excited about the word the Lord is going to bring today. Now, in these podcasts, this next series we're in, this will be number four, part four, in spiritual warfare. Amen? A lot of y'all uh, uh, might not believe there is a war going on. And I've noticed uh, 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 in the churches, they don't know much about spiritual warfare. But there is a battle going on, and it's for your souls. We're concerned about your soul. We need you. We want you to make it into heaven with us. Amen. And that's why we're here. And we're going to teach you how to get in that war room, come out of that war room with your war clothes on, and do battle for God's kingdom. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right. A shout out to all of you on YouTube. Just know we love you and we're here for you. I had a call this morning from a very uh, distraught young man. And that's why we're late. And it's okay. Because he's important to God. And God brought him here. And we got to take the time to minister to him. I can't give you the details without his permission. You understand. But it's deep. It's deep. Amen? Now, this young man's name is Micah, and he's in Australia. Amen? I need y'all prayer warriors to come on and pray with me. This is a rough and tough battle he's going through. Amen? And it could affect his very life. Pray for Micah. Amen? But at any rate, Thank God for all of you on YouTube, all of you on Facebook, our Facebook family, friends, and loved ones. Amen. We love all of you. We thank God for you. And we treat you with the tender, loving care that Christ would treat you with if he was speaking in this microphone. And he is. He's doing it through me. Our hearts are his heart. And we truly mean it. We love you. And we're here for you. And as you're going through these struggles, especially, come on, Micah, 29 years old, in probably one of the greatest battles of his life, and his life depends on the decisions that he makes. And we're going to get into that in this podcast. It's heavy on my heart, y'all. We haven't even finished the sh shout-outs, and I'm asking you to lift Micah in prayer that the Lord would just touch him and reveal himself to him in a very real and powerful way. Amen. A shout out to our beautiful island of Mindanao. All y'all know I'm an island boy. I lost my tan. I got to get back out there. But you know I'm an island boy, and I just love, I love the island of Mindanao and all the beautiful people there. Dipalog City, what's up? <laughs> And Woody Boy and Joe Ryan on the Mighty Mix FM 90.1 on your FM radio dial. And they have just grabbed a hold of this word that God's putting on our hearts, this podcast. 
and they are doing a thing to broadcast this thing huh, with fire, Holy Ghost fire, into the hearts, minds, souls, and spirits, into the ears and bodies of all the beautiful people in Dipolog City and those surrounding villages and cities, all the way over to the town of Palenco. Thank you, Joe Ryan. God bless you, Joe Ryan. And we're still working on that transmitter. Don't think. We've given up. We've got a lot of emails to a lot of uh, radio stations waiting for a response. One way or the other, God's going to get you that transmitter in the mighty name of Jesus. Just know it in your heart. Amen. We thank God for Charlotte and Dale down under. Pray for them. Pray for them. Mary Murray fell yesterday. Mary, what you doing out of bed anyway? Now, I thought I gave you an assignment to get up there into heaven. Amen. And ask Mary Magdalene to give me a call. I want to interview her in a podcast. That's a very powerful woman. And we got some questions about her coming up at the end of the podcast, so stay tuned. Amen. But keep Murray in your prayers in these last days of his here. <laughs> There's no last days for Murray because he's going to heaven. There's no last days for any of us. Everybody going somewhere. At least Dale and Charlotte and their family and Murray know where he's going. Amen. God's already spoke and shown Murray visions. Come on, Murray. Stay in the bed and stop running around. Amen. Them angels is coming for you. They're calling your name, Murray. And we just want to celebrate you and thank God for your life. Keep Charlotte and Dale up in your prayers. Amen. Pray also for Minister Deborah Atwell down under. I'm She ain't down under. She in the Bahamas, another beautiful island. And I'm trying to get there. She said they got orphanages over there I can minister at. Churches I can minister at. Prisons I can minister at. Oh, I can't wait to get to the Bahamas. Amen. But that lady's on fire for souls and doing everything she can to grasp every single lost soul on that island and get up in get them up into the love of Christ and into heaven. Amen. So pray for her ministry. Again, lift Micah up. 29 year old gentleman in the fight for his life. Amen. And so keep Micah lifted up in your prayers. And he's not far from Anna. Amen. Keep Anna and her ministry Lift it up in your prayers. She is just a blessing to me, this ministry, all of you that she's reaching out to. Keep her lifted up in your prayers. And Samanga, down in Zambia, Africa, pray that the Lord would send people to her Bible study with a hunger to get into this word, to get the knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding of this all-powerful word into their hearts that they may live this thing for Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you, Samanga. Pray for Jacob and her son. He's gotten a miracle. Oh, miracles happening. I had so many calls this morning. I know we're late, but hey, we got to minister uh, where we got to minister. Amen. And I love ministry. And I take my time with each and every one of you that need me. Amen. If you're on YouTube and you want to get in touch with me personally, come on over to Facebook. Find me, Rev Eddie. That's one word on Facebook. Rev Eddie. No space, no period, no dash. One word, Rev Eddie Wiggins. And message me and we'll exchange numbers. And we'll chat it out. We'll talk it out. We'll cry it out. We'll shout it out. Amen. We're going to pray it out and know that God always will work it out. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Has anybody thanked God today? Come on, y'all. Give God a shout. Thank you, Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Pray for Maddie. Medical issues. Complete healing in her body from the top of her head to the soles of her feet and in her heart and mind as she goes through some struggles. Keep her lifted up in your prayers. Heal through and through completely. 
in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Amen. Keep Nick and Patricia uh, and their ministry, their prison ministry in Texas as they're traveling. They'll travel 150 miles to get to a prison. Now, you know, that's, that's warriors for Jesus. Amen. And they don't get paid for this. You got to understand, in ministry, it is a sacrifice. And they're sacrificing everything to get behind these prison walls and be a blessing to God's people behind that them 30-foot walls and that razor wire on top that keeps them in. But God made a way for Nick and Patricia to get in and minister this powerful, powerful gospel of Jesus Christ. And people are getting saved. God is honoring their work. He's saving his people through Nick and Patricia. They're getting healed. They're getting delivered. The power of God is going behind those walls. And I just thank God for them. And I'll, I'll announce to you again today, on the 17th, this is Saturday, uh, I'll be leaving for Texas to join them. Pray for me that I can get to death row. They get to death row, too. I ain't never heard of no ministry getting to death row. I want to go. Pray I get there. Amen. And I won't be able to podcast between the 17th, that Saturday, and the next Saturday, which will be the 24th of June. Amen. That's when I return. So no podcast those days, but boy, I'm going to miss each and every one of you. I'll be praying for you. You keep praying for me, and we'll be back on that Sunday, the 25th. Know it. And boy, we're going to have some testimonies. Amen. All right. Keep uh, Coach Gecker and his lovely wife, Kay, Dr. Kay, and all his family. Uh, uh, friends, relatives, loved ones up in your prayers. Amen. Pray for Chris. Amen. Down under. Laura Bolin. Keep her lifted up in your prayers. And Donna and her two sons. Harvey Carey and his wife Rosie. Amen. And Anthony and Jamal down there on the ground on the beautiful streets of downtown Atlanta, Georgia. Spreading this gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Elena Vasquez and her son Nelly Vasquez. Keep them both lifted up in your prayers. Amen. What, what a powerful woman of God. Amen. And we thank God for her and all the work she's doing. Everything she's sacrificing for this ministry. We thank God for you. We thank God for you, Elena. And we pray healing over your son, Nelly, right now. Everybody watching this podcast, pray for Nelly. He was born with autism. Amen. He's 12 years old. Amen. And doing the work of a first or second grade, whatever, I, I may not be sure I'll ask Elena about that. Amen. Uh, but we're going to pray for total and complete restoration in his body, soul, and mind. Autism gone in the mighty name of Jesus and filled with the Holy Spirit and all the wisdom and knowledge he needs to catch up with his age group. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, you might think that's a tall order. It's not. Nothing's impossible for God. And I know in my heart he's going to do it. I asked the Lord, would he do it? We're waiting for that praise report. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hey, Nellie. <laughs> hey, Elena. God bless you both. Pray for Rod and his grandma. Amen. Grandma Naomi, 97 years young, and she just follows this podcast every day. She loves that the kids are uh, uh, cheering for her, and I miss you, Grandma. I miss our Sunday dinners uh, where we would eat such good food. Rod's a great cook and a warrior for Jesus Christ. He was in our Bible study last night uh, on Zoom, and so was Elena. Amen. And I thank God for the Bible study last night. It was awesome. We had a great time. And you guys are welcome to join any time. Amen. And uh, keep raw as he's battling for his grandma and for the uh, sanctity of that home where they reside. You think they're just kicking it? No. They in a battle, amen. But uh, let's give uh, Grandma Naomi 
a shout out. Hey, Grandma. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And keep uh, my sisters, Karen and Jan, and my auntie, Annette, lifted up in your prayers. Amen. Sarah, the paramedic, ex-paramedic, and Captain Haynes, uh, ex uh Fire Department, Captain of the San Diego Fire Department. Keep them lifted up in your prayers in their ministries. Amen. Keep Prophetess, Minister Mary Jo Mosley, lifted up in your prayers. A long time warrior. Amen. Her and I go back, I don't know how many, 30-something years. Amen. And her and her husband, her husband was one of my favorite reverends. I mean, pastors. With a heart, oh my goodness! I walked in his office one day. I said, "Uh," he said, "What you un about?" I said, "I just feel the spirit of God in here. Somebody's praying in this room." He looked at me. He said, "This is my war room." <laughs> Amen. I miss Reverend Mosley, and uh, heaven got blessed by having him. Amen. But we're gonna see him soon. Amen. So you keep prophetess. Minister Mary Jo Mosley lifted up, 80 years old and still preaching, still teaching, still prophesying, still running for the Lord. Amen. Keep her lifted up in your prayers. Pray for Dorothy and uh, her dad and her son Lee. Amen. Uh, pray for Pastor Jordy and her ministry. Scott and Carolyn, so dear to our hearts, our founders of Because He Lives Ministries. Eight kids. Pray for all their children, especially Sarah and their grandbaby, uh, Summer. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Pray for Keith and Jay Clark. Amen. We love you, Jay Clark. We love you, Keith. Jay Clark, you were so special to us. And the kids were in the back wiping off their mouths. They had all that Oreo stuff on their lips and sticky stuff in their hands. You know how they twist the Oreos and play with the little uh, double stuff in the middle. Yeah, they were a mess, but they cleaned up. They wanted to tell you something. Jay! <laughs> Amen. Pray for Cheyenne and Helena Gore and Ladera and her entire family. We just love you, Ladera. And Evangelist Tammy and her ministry and Ashley and her daughter and family and Lucia and Sasha. I got to talk to Lucia yesterday and Sasha today, just know we love you. We're here for you. You're not going through this alone. The body of Christ binds together, amen, in love. And we're here for you. You just lean on us. How can we help? You need some prayer? I mean, you're a long way. She over there in England, I believe, okay? We'll find somebody in England to come over there and hug you for us. That's what you need. Just know we got you. Amen. We're here for you, and we will fight with you shoulder to shoulder, side by side, in all your struggles and this battle, in Jesus' name. Amen. And pray for April and her children. I got to talk to April this morning. What a blessing she is. Dominique Moore, Billy Moore, E.S. from YouTube. Amen. Keep them lifted up in your prayers. Pastor Neely over there in Dipalog City, ministering in Dipalog and all those other areas surrounding villages all the way up into the mountains. She's on fire for the Lord. Amen. And uh, we got more or less and some sticky notes. It's getting bigger and bigger. Amen. Keep Veronica and Becca and Michelle Bowman, who are just receiving miracles from the Lord, Keep them up in your prayers and Precious and the Thunder Twins and Tim and Heather and Jaden and Haley and Big Eric and Little Eric and Christina with a K down there in Mississippi. Amen. Uh, with Christ in her heart and Christ in her name. Keep her lifted up in your prayers. And boy, Heather's on fire. N another three miracles in their family just today. I'm telling you. This prayer list that God put together, I did not do this. He drew you here. He drew you to say, pray for me, and God is moving all around this world quickly. 
It's like we're in the last days, and I do believe we are. Amen? We got to step our game up to keep up with what God is doing. But he's sending forth these miracles, and I want each and every one of you to get yours. Amen? Pray for Giovanni and Sophia and Paul. Now, Tim Clayton, Nancy Bullock, and Stephanie Durf Deffer were all diagnosed with cancer. Gone in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Tyler's going through. I mean, the devil's just attacking that young girl's body. Come on. A lot of pain. Let's pray for Tyler. Amen. She's down under. Mateo. Pray for Mateo. Down under. And Julie and Margaret. Down under. Keep them lifted up in your prayers. Wangui Inn in Melbourne, Australia. Anna's looking for you, Wangui. Amen. Uh, keep her lifted up in your prayers. Angelica Lewis, keep her lifted up in your prayers. All these are down under. Amazing how the Lord is reaching into Australia. Amen. I think he wants me to go there to a barbecue. What y'all think? I can't wait to get there. They say they got a shrimp on the barbie for me. Yeah, I need a whole bunch of them shrimps. Don't y'all eat them all. But there got to be some churches I can get into, give my testimony, some people who need uh, prayer that we can get to. I can't wait to minister in Australia. Amen. Uh, Whitney and Sherry, okay, keep them lifted up in your prayers. They're married, and Whitney got a miracle yesterday. Hallelujah. The Lord blessed him with a job. He'd been praying for a job. He got it. And he's a strong, strong warrior for the Lord. So he be, he'll be ministering on that job site. Amen. Keep Zarlia, our baby girl, 18 months old. She's getting good reports now. The, uh, t the tumors are sh uh, shrinking. But they still, they're pumping that little baby, 18 months old, with... Uh, chemo let's just pray that the lord will block the negative effects of that chemo that the lord would continue to shrink and make all those tumors and spots disappear in her brain amen and be with her mom and dad and her brother she has a brother and all her family and relatives as they're going through this struggle amen they're a good strong christian family but let's keep them up in their prayers amen Keep Jesse from YouTube up in your prayers. Him and I are talking, and boy's about to catch on fire. Amen. Uh, Laura from YouTube, her, her daughter Micah. Keep Micah lifted up in your prayers. She's going through an intense battle. Let's pray for Micah. Amen. Jean healed with uh, her tumors, healed in the mighty name of Jesus, and she received that healing in Jesus' name. Amen. Pray for Ken, who lost his daughter about six, seven weeks ago now. Keep him lifted up in your prayers, okay? He's trying to figure out how he can serve God the best. Keep him up in your prayers that God will reveal what Ken does next. And after that, and after that, and after that, amen? Pray for Ryan down under. Pray for Christine Starr, she's here, and Robert Minnick over there in Texas, amen? Uh, health in his body. He's got some medical issues. I've known Robert for some years now. Amen. Clifford and Carly, keep them lifted up in your prayers. And we got a new one, Martin and Paris and Julie and John and Joshua and Jordan and Mariano. Keep them all lifted up in your prayers, all down below, down under, not below, down under in the beautiful continent continent of australia amen who's ready for a word y'all ready for a word praise god grab your bibles grab your bibles unless you're driving don't grab your bible and drive amen just listen i'm not going to twist this word i'm going to give it to you just the way it reads amen now we're going to first john chapter five this is real powerful we've been talking about spiritual warfare Spiritual warfare, it is real. I don't care whether others are acknowledging it or not. It is real. Why do you think you see all that you're seeing in this dark, sin-sick, broken world? 
you're seeing the effects of Satan and his demons. Amen? Some are preaching that Christians can't be attacked by Satan and his demons, can't have demons. That is a lie. Look at the condition of the church today. Walk in a church if you're brave enough. <laughs> Amen? Some of them out there, <coughs> <coughs> trust me, Satan doesn't miss a church service. He got a better attendance record than we do. Amen. He's in there every Sunday. <laughs> Amen. And this thing ain't no joke because you don't acknowledge the demons. Some don't even believe there are demons. Don't believe in angels. That's okay. Your disbelief doesn't take away the truth. It's real. Amen. And we want to win this thing. We want to win this battle. Now listen to what the Word of God says. Amen? This is 1 John chapter 5. And I'm going to start in verse 1. I'm going to try to read this whole chapter. This is good here. Amen? And it's talking about this battle and how to win it. How to win it. Pay attention. I'm reading out of the New Living Translation for your ease. Amen? Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ, another word for Messiah, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of God, the Son of Man, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Savior of the world, the Lamb of God who take all the way sin. It didn't say all that. I just got excited. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has become a child of God. Hallelujah! <laughs> and everyone who loves the Father loves his children too. We know we love God's children if we love God and obey his commandments. Loving God means keeping his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. What commandment? Jesus gave us two. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your spirit, with all your emotions, with your fingernails, your neck, your ear. Love him with everything you are and everything he put in you. Hold nothing back. Love God. And love each other as Jesus loves us. And now we've gone over that. He said, Jesus said, you do these two, you fulfill all the law and all the prophets. That's it. But it takes the love of God in us to do these two commandments. That's why you got to open up those hearts, become one with this word, one with the Holy Spirit of God. Jesus will dwell in you. God is love. With Jesus in you, with his spirit in you, his Holy Spirit is the spirit of love. If God is love and he's put his spirit in you, it's not that hard. This is not rocket science. The problem is us. We don't want to do it God's way. We want to do it our way. As if our way is better than God's way. Okay? I don't know about that. My way got me in hell. I don't know what problems y'all got trying to do it your way. My way didn't work. I'm doing it God's way from here on out, and I pray you join me. Amen? It says his commandments are not burdensome. They're not. Now, the Pharisees, Sadducees, teachers of religious law and Judaism, yeah. Now, that's burdensome. Some of these religions out here, they got so many law laws and rules and bylaws and regulations. <laughs> got nothing to do with the true worship of God. You see? It's not that hard to love God. You don't have to wear green on Tuesday. You can't wear blue on Thursday. You got to eat fish on Saturday and no hamburgers on Wednesday. What's that got to do with the worship of God? But they'll put you out their church if you don't b follow their bylaw. Mm -mm. This word. Get in this word. Read your word. Read your word. Read your word. Tell you that every day. That way you're not fooled. That way you're not deceived. 
That way you know how to live for him. Get this in you. Amen. Become one with it. Your life is a walking gospel, a living gospel. You get this word in you. Amen. Verse 4, for every child of God defeats this evil world, and we achieve this victory through our faith. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. Come on now. What are you? <coughs> Bubba, you picking your nose again? Stop. Get, get a Kleenex. What's wrong with you? You nasty. Goodness <coughs> gracious. Pay attention. You don't even have your Bible open, Bubba. Bubba got a secret admirer, y'all. I ain't even told Bubba. You got your Kleenex? Sit down. Wipe your fingers and nose. Open up that Bible. Bubba got a secret admirer. He does. I didn't even want to tell him because he'd get all excited about girls. See, there he goes. There he goes. I knew I shouldn't tell him. Somebody take the clip out of that AK. Sit down, Bubba. Bubba got a secret admirer. Yeah, they hit me up. They said they love Bubba. And they want to get next to Bubba. And they want to give Bubba a kiss. I told him I ain't letting Bubba out of his cell until he start acting like he got some sense. Amen. We got to get the word of God in Bubba. Bubba can't handle no kiss right now. Can you, Bubba? You're not well. Sit down and read that Bible. And watch this. Verse 4 again. For every child of God defeats this evil world. And we achieve the victory through our faith. If you're a child of God, then that means you're obeying his commandments. You're in love with him. You're in love with Jesus. You've allowed his love to come into you. You got this word up in you. or You, you know, you're studying this word. You're becoming one with it. You're spirit filled. Child of God, listen. For every child of God defeats this evil world. But I'm looking at fear, indecision, crying, and hurt by children of God. Uh-uh, stop that defeat. You're listening to the enemy. He's telling you God don't love you. He's telling you this word ain't powerful. You don't need to do your Bible studies with us. You don't need to open up the Bible on your own. That's a lie from the enemy. He don't want you in this word. Read your word. Set a time out every day and read your word. A psalm coming in on your phone on an app is not reading your word. Amen? Watch this. Verse 4. For every child of God defeats this evil world. Are you listening to me, Micah, who I talked to this morning? our 29-year-old 20, young man over there in Australia. You need victory in your life? You need Jesus. You're not going to do this without Jesus. That's where our victory comes from. Amen? For every child of God defeats this evil world, and we achieve, achieve this victory through our faith. Our faith in what? Our faith in Jesus. Glory! <laughs> And who can win this battle against the world? Good question. Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. There it is. Without Jesus, you can't even get on this battlefield without getting whooped, and you are getting whooped. You've tried it on your own strength, and you tow up from the flow up. You've got to grab a hold of Jesus. There's not a person born that won't have this question to answer. Who is Jesus to you? We've been teaching in these podcasts who we are to him and who he is to us. You ought to know by now. But see, you're not going to do this thing. You're not going to get into heaven without Jesus. You're not going to win your battles on this earth without Jesus. He's the truth, the life. And the way, there's no getting around that. You can't get to the Father except by Jesus. But so many religions are trying to. They say they can. You can not. And you're lost. And if you don't grab a hold of Jesus, you're going to burn in hell. Amen? 
Now, you might not like what you're hearing, but I got to I got to tell the truth. I don't care what religion you're in. I'm not banging on no religion. But if your religion doesn't have Jesus as God, if Jesus isn't God in the flesh, God in the flesh, Jesus, the Son of God, Son of Man, the Messiah, the Savior of the world, the one who went to that cross and died for your sins, for all the sins of this world, shed his blood, suffered a horrible death that we might live forever with him. If your religion ain't teaching that, lose the religion. You don't have a Savior. Without a Savior, where do you think you're going to go? Oh, we can go directly to the Father. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. Not according to Jesus. And he's the truth. And he can't lie. And he said, no one gets to the Father except by me. Come on, it's time for you to wake up. Days are ending, and we don't know how many we got left. We're about to go into this tribulation. We are right at the door. The birth pains are among us, and them seals are about to be broken. Now, you've been playing with this all your life. You want to keep playing with God? Go ahead. But there's a fire waiting for you, and I've seen it. I felt it. I've been there. You don't want to go to hell. Get a hold of your Savior, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, before it's too late. Well, we're waiting for the Elijah to come first. <laughs> if you got into this word, and John 1 and 1 says that Jesus is the word, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Verse 14 says, and the word became flesh. He already came. But you won't read the Word. You won't read your Bible. You won't pass the Malachi. And look what's happening to your nation. You were his chosen. Now I'm his chosen. Aren't you jealous? Come on. Come on board this train. Because this is a Holy Ghost train. And this Holy Ghost train's last stop is inside those pearly gates. Now you may think you're on a train, but that train ain't headed the same direction that the train I'm on is. Amen? And you say, I'm picking on you? I'm imploring you. Find Jesus. You can't get to the Father except through Jesus. You don't believe me? Come on, let me give you some more word. Only those that believe Jesus is the Son of God can win this battle. We're in a spiritual battle, y'all, and people are deceived out there. They're being lied to by religious entities that you don't need Jesus. That's the work of Satan. That's the work of the devil to remove us from the only one who can save us. Verse 6, And Jesus Christ was revealed as God's Son by his baptism in water and by shedding his blood on the cross. Keep telling you, it's always about the blood. It's always about the cross. It has to. Any ministry that is truly ministering the true gospel of Jesus Christ, you've got to have the message of the cross. How can you miss the cross? Come on now. Watch this. As Jesus Christ was revealed as God's Son by his baptism in water and by shedding his blood on the cross, not by water only, but by water and blood. And the Spirit, who is true, confirms it with his testimony. So we have these three witnesses, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and all three agree. Amen? Now some manuscripts read a few very late manuscripts add in heaven the Father and the Word and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. Amen? All right, and so verse 9, since we believe human testimony, surely we can believe the greater testimony that comes from God. And God has testified about his Son. All who believe in the Son know in their hearts that this testimony is true. Those who don't believe, those who don't believe, pay attention, listen to this. Those who don't believe this are actually calling God a liar. 
You want to stand before his throne and call him a liar. Really? You thought that was a good idea. Are you high? Are you drunk? Tell me you're not in your right mind when you want to call God a liar. Tell me. That wasn't your best thought for today. <laughs> I'm going to read it again. Amen. Verse 10. All who believe in the Son of God know in their hearts that this testimony is true. Those who don't believe this are actually calling God a liar because they don't believe what God has testified about his Son. Verse 11, and this is what God has testified. He has given us eternal life, and this light is in his Son. Whoever has the Son <laughs> has life. Whoever does not have God's Son does not have life. I don't see how the Lord could make it any clearer than that. If you're going to go through this battle, this spiritual warfare that we're talking about, you ain't doing it on your own strength. And the only way you're going to have victory is with Christ Jesus. Our last series of podcasts, How to Fall in Love with Jesus. Amen? The one before that, Becoming One with the Spirit, Living in the Spirit. It's all led to this spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare. It's real. But you can't battle that devil and demon on your own. You fighting angels now, huh? You that bad boy. Uh-huh. Let me know how that works for you. But with the power of God, Amen. <laughs> By the power of this Holy Spirit, we get on this battlefield and we're fighting for souls. We're fighting for your healing. And God's doing the miracle. He's saving you. He's healing you, delivering you. PTSD gone. Come on now. Depression gone. Anxiety gone. We're getting praise reports all the time. Cancer gone in the mighty name of Jesus. Heart murmurs, gone in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't care what the doctors call it. Gone in the name of Jesus. What are you battling for? Oh, you battling with your wife in a divorce for the house, huh? <laughs> I guess you are in a battle. Amen? It's not what we're talking about. We're talking about battling for your life. Forget the stuff on this earth. You battling for job position. You battling for a better job. You battling for a raise from your employer. I understand there's many battles, but the ultimate battle is where are you going to spend eternity? And that's what the spiritual warfare is about. Satan is trying to destroy the very love of God, us. He loves us with everything. He proved it on the cross. And Satan's trying to kill us and destroy us. But God has put a mighty hedge of protection and a wall of fire around us. So Satan is firing his darts over. And we went through this in yesterday's podcast. We put on the armor of God, not the armor of men. Don't go down to the army surplus store looking for uh, flak jackets and <laughs> bulletproof vests. It ain't going to help you in this spiritual battle. Amen. We got to arm up the way God said to arm up. And let's talk about that. I'm going to stop right there. I wanted to read the whole chapter, but you guys may be late and we're running out of time. Let's talk about that. We have more weapons to go along in our arsenal than we was listed in Ephesians chapter 6 yesterday. Your prayers are powerful weapons against the work of the enemy. Are you with me? Prayer is power. And when you fast, you add power to the prayer. Jesus said, these kind only come out by prayer and fasting. The disciples were casting out demons. They couldn't cast the de demon out of this little boy. They asked Jesus, why? These kind come out with prayer and fasting. So fasting adds power to your prayer. You're scared to fast, huh? You think Colonel's going to run out of chicken? Because you fasted, it'll be there. Amen? But we need that power. And 
we need to pray for one another. Look at this prayer list. Look at God. I don't know. I done dropped it somewhere. I got the little sticky notes from it. Look at this prayer list that God's moving miracles on. And it's us praying for each other, and he's moving. There's power in prayer. There's power in your praise. I've told you this before. I, I put songs on. You might not like my song. I like the old church. I love Dottie Peebles and Shirley Caesar and some of the greatest, you know, uh, old, old school, old church music. I love it. Lee Williams, his brother, the Williams brothers. Come on now, Sam Cook. He was singing gospel. Amen. There was power back then. Power in the church. The pastors really preached this word. The Holy Spirit moved in those churches. Amen. And the choir sang. And the deacons prayed. There was power in them churches. Amen. And those folks are making it to heaven. Now you might say, well, I don't like the old church. I like the new way, the new way to do it. But is there power there? That's my only question. If it's working for you and it's powerful, stay in it. Amen? I found what works for me in this ministry. Amen? And those like Pastor, uh, uh, I mean, uh, Prophetess Minister Moses, I bet she liked some of that old school music. She loved her some Dottie people. Amen? Some Shirley Caesar. My pastor did, Pastor Hubbard. That's where I learned it from, Pastor Hubbard. So I got brought up that way, and there's power there. Power there to get to heaven. Hmm. Power to save, heal, deliver, and set free. Amen? But your praise is what God inhabits. The Bible says that praise chokes the enemy's neck. They don't want to hear you pray. They want to hear you fussing and cussing and fighting and cursing God. When you start praising, that puts the enemy on the run. He got to get away. Turn that music up. Scream louder. Maybe you can sing. Maybe you can't sing. Who cares? Yell it out. <laughs> Amen. That'll back that enemy off. You're under attack. Praise. How can he attack when he's on the run from your praise? He's launching fiery arrows into your camp. You can launch spiritual missiles back into his camp, put him on the run. Praise is a powerful weapon. Amen? Your prayer is a powerful we weapon. Fasting kills the flesh. Indirectly. Let me explain that. When we fast, when we turn over that plate, we're denying our flesh something it's crying for, something it always wants. It always want to eat. It always wants to get high. It always wants to get drunk. It wants, always wants to have sex. Amen? Back before I went to hell, that's what I was doing, feeding my flesh. Anything the flesh cried out for, I gave it. Therefore, my spirit wasn't winning any battles after I got out, out of hell. And Pastor prayed for me, and I got filled with that Holy Ghost in power. She had me fasting all the time. Because what happens when you turn over that plate, plate you pray holy spirit i hear this flesh crying when you get hungry and your tummy's growling that's it crying grab it with your hands offer it up to the holy spirit of god who is the crucifier of our flesh and pray holy spirit this flesh is dying kill it crucify it nail it to my cross never to come back to life again. And the Holy Spirit will do that. As you're handing these things over, this is a deliverance ministry, and a big part of a deliverance ministry is fasting, dying to ourself, dying to sin, the sinful nature, dying to selfishness, relinquishing all of that to God, and allowing His Spirit to work the process of sanctification as he makes us more and more like Christ. How, how's he going to make us more like Christ when you're still going out looking for prostitutes, when you're still out there buying drugs? Did Christ do that? Was he satisfying the sinful nature? No. 
Walking in the Spirit requires that we die so that he can live through us. And that way, his will for our lives will be done. The very purpose that he created us for will come to pass. But we got to get out of the way. Now, as the Holy Spirit crucifies that flesh, you see, Satan will hit on that flesh. Let's say it was womanizing. Amen? Well, if you've been delivered from that, and that flesh is dead, Satan hits on that. Hey, look at that girl over there. No, I ain't looking at that girl over there. I'm on a mission for God. There's no flesh for him to tempt. You're dead in that area in your life. So he used to be a drug addict, like me. So he hits on that one. Come on, let's go get high. Don't do that no more, Satan. <laughs> I'm living for God, and I'm on a mission. That flesh is dead. Dead flesh can't be tempted. Are you with me? Do you hear me? That's why there's got to be a death. And it's us that's got to die. We got to die to the pride, die to the selfishness, die to our wants. Because <laughs> generally, our wants, I know mine want, they're not l lined up with the Word of God. We want, we want, we want, we want, but God wants. Amen? We got to learn to live for Him. And in order to do that, we got to die to our sinful nature. Amen? And once dead, there's nothing for him to tempt. Who cares if he, he can tempt me all day? He's tempting nothing. There's nothing there that's going to uh, uh, get excited. You see? Dead flesh. So that's a part of spiritual warfare. Amen? Allowing the Holy Spirit to shape us and form us and mold us and make us into what he wants us to be. Amen? Let me get to a couple of questions here. We just got a couple of couple of minutes left. I might not be able to get to them all. Elena is just so awesome. And she's asking stuff, okay, that a lot of you benefit from, and I love it. Why do you suppose Mary Magdalene had favor with Jesus? She says, no, she is mentioned by name in the cana canonical uh, gospels more than most of the apostles and more than any other woman in the gospels other than Jesus' family. And more notably, as in the gospel of John, it describes an appearance by Jesus to Mary Magdalene and Jesus casting out uh, seven evil spirits and infirmities. Amen. And in Luke 8 and 2, it says, And also some women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out. Now, if you've ever read the Gospel of Mary Magdalene, amen, that's in part of the Dead Sea School. That's, that's an awesome gospel. And she describes the ascent of the soul. Yeah. She used to be Satan. There were demons attached to her, and she's doing stuff that didn't allow her to obey this word of God. But Jesus cast them out. Amen? And so as she is ascending up, she ascends through realms in deliverance today. We're calling it getting the junk out of your trunk so you're light for the flight, getting everything out of us that can't serve God so he can lift us up. Reveal things to us. Take us higher in him. And eventually, right off this earth and into those pearly gates, there is a scent of the soul. Amen. Mary describes it as realms and ignorance and selfishness and all these other realms. Amen. And so these demons recognize her. Hey, where are you going? They see her rising up. I know you. She's talking to them. No, you don't. You're looking at the outside. You think think you know me, because they have her. But they don't know her now because she's living in the spirit. You see, it was deliverance that she wrote about in that. And where would she get that knowledge from? She got it from Jesus. She was one of his followers. I'm telling you, when them disciples were asleep before Jesus laid down, 
He's still sitting at the table, and she's cleaning dish, empty dishes, asking him, does he want another piece of lemon meringue pie? And you're like, sure, Mary. Another cup of coffee, Lord? Sure, Mary. Get yourself one and sit down with me. You know, Lord loved ministering, and he ministered to Mary. Mary knew a lot more than those disciples. Amen. And she ate it up. Ate it up. Those women were loving the Word of God. They were paying attention to the Word of God. It's easy to teach those who are hungry for this Word. Amen. I love the women in his ministry and all that they did for Christ and all that the Lord did with them. He made them equals in a society where women were treated horribly. Amen. And so what was the question? Why do you suppose Mary Magdalene had favor with Jesus Christ? Because her heart was open to receive all of him. His love, his mercy, his forgiveness, his grace, his wisdom, his knowledge, his understanding. She wanted everything Jesus had to offer. Amen. That's the way we need to be. Question two. Why are there so many controversies with the following Bible scripture possibly related to Mary Magdalene? Some argue that it pertains to Mary Magdalene and others argue against it being her. Can I get to the truth of this matter? Yes, I can. And the scripture she's talking about is Luke 7 and 37. Let's go there. Amen. Turn your Bibles to Luke 7. Verse 37. Amen. It actually starts at verse 36. That's where I'm going to start. And out of my Bible, now she listed too. And behold, a woman of the city who was a sinner, when she learned that he was reclining at table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of ointment. Amen. Now, <coughs> It is argued, but misunderstood, that this woman, okay, was Mary Magdalene. Let's see what Luke has to say. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to have dinner with him, so Jesus went to his home and sat down to eat. When a certain immoral woman from that city heard he was eating there, she brought a beautiful alabaster jar filled with expensive perfume. Then she knelt behind him at his feet, weeping. You got to catch this scene. Weeping at the feet of Jesus. She knew she was a sinner. And she knew him. She knew who he was. A savior. One who could forgive her sin. Amen? Her tears fell on, her, on his feet and she wiped them off with her hair. Then she kept kissing his feet and putting perfume on them. Let's keep reading. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know what kind of woman is touching him. She's a sinner. That's what he's thinking. Then Jesus answered his thought. That should have let this Pharisee know. Jesus is God. Who knows your thought? He missed it. Then Jesus answered his thought. Simon. He said to the Pharisee, I have something to say to you. Go ahead, teacher, Simon replied. Then Jesus told him this story. Now, for lack of time, well, let's go into it. A man loaned money to two people, 500 pieces of silver to one and 50 pieces to another. But neither of them could repay him, so he kindly forgave them both, canceling their debt. Who do you suppose loved him more after that? Simon answered, I suppose the one for whom he canceled the larger debt. That's right, Jesus said. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Look at this woman kneeling here. When I entered your home, you didn't offer me water to wash the dust from my feet. And that was a custom. So this Pharisee wanted to neglect Jesus and show him and who he was. I'm wearing my robe. I'm all of that little man, and wouldn't even offer to wash uh, 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 
Jesus' feet with a bowl of water and a towel. Too proud. Too proud. He's all that, and Jesus is nothing. I invited him to my house to show Jesus who I am. That was his attitude. Watch this. Uh, this is verse 40, the rest of 43. Simon answered him, and Jesus said, that's right. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, look at this woman kneeling here. When I entered your home, you didn't offer me water to wash the dust off my feet, but she has washed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You didn't greet me with a kiss, but from the time I first came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You neglected the courtesy of olive oil to anoint my head, but she has anointed my feet with rare perfume. I tell you, her sins, and they are many, have been forgiven. So she has shown much love. She has shown me much love, but a person who is forgiven little shows only little love. Talk about the Pharisee. He don't even think he need forgiveness. Amen. Then Jesus said to the woman, your sins are forgiven. The men at the table sat among themselves. Who is this man that he goes around forgiving sins, missing the fact that this is God himself in the flesh, the only one who can forgive our sins? And Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. In spite of the crowd, he blessed this woman. This woman was, uh, uh, they're saying that this woman was Mary Magdalene. This woman is not named. But in answer to your question, there is a, another woman with a similar incident mentioned in Matthew 26, 6 through 13. She anointed God's feet with oil, and Judas Iscariot said, Hey, we could have sold that oil. He wasn't going to sell it. He was going to sell it and steal the money. But he says, we could have sold that oil, that perfume. It was worth a year's wages and gave the money to the poor, according to Judas. Amen. Now that occurs in Matthew 26, 6 through 13, Mark 14, 3 through 9, and John 12, 1 through 11. Now, that Mary is not Mary Magdalene. That Mary is the sister of Martha and the sister of Lazarus. Amen? So there's two different incidences with women at the feet of Jesus. Blessing our Lord and Savior. Now, that's worship at the feet of Jesus. There's no greater act of love and worship than to be at his feet. Amen? So I pray that we uh, answered those two questions. Amen. Question three. Now we're going to have to have podcasts on this. Why don't preachers like to address the topic of masturbation? Close your ears, kids. Okay. Their ears are closed. Okay. This adult conversation. Y'all can't hear this. Why don't preachers like to address the topic of masturbation? Where does it clearly say no masturbation in scripture well we don't have the time i'm already over an hour scripture doesn't i've studied it i've ministered to this to people for years it's not a sin according to the bible i know pastors and preachers are quoting scriptures a good book a very good book is called the joy of sex hang on let me see if i can reach it I can't. I can't. When we address this, maybe tomorrow, this is going to take a whole podcast because there's a lot of scripture to cover. Amen. But relieving oneself in the Old Testament was compared to women's menstrual cycle. Can a woman help that? No. Now, unceremonially unclean, yes. And they had a remedy for that. Remove yourself from the camp, pray for seven days, come back clean. Amen. We can do that. Amen. But there is no scripture that says that you can't relieve yourself. As a matter of fact, there's a scripture that said, if you do, 
do it outside the camp because the Lord is in the camp. Why was he in the camp? He was in the tent of meeting, Moses' tent. So he's here, so he, you're going to play with it, take it outside the camp, amen? But it, there isn't a scripture that forbids it. Now, there's a way to do it where you could be sinful, and there's ways to do it where you aren't. We'll get into this, okay? But I'll take that stand now. You can question me all you want, but I know my Bible. And there is a book called The Joy of Sex. I was trying to get you the authors. It's a woman and uh, uh, her husband, strong Christians, ministers of this gospel, that have researched, and they do minister to Christian couples. Amen. They have a ministry doing that, trying to get their marriages healthy. And a big part of uh, Christian marriages is struggles with sex. Sometimes a person's hurt, they're not into it. And the other one's like over-eager. And how do you get that blend? How do you get a healthy relationship between man and wife? It's an awesome book, The Joy of Sex. Find that. Amen. And they do answer this question, and we'll go there. Let me find it. I got a big bookshelf, and it's buried in there. But we'll do this in a podcast. This is, this is going to take time. But I think that she knew. Uh, where does it say clearly no masturbation in Scripture? It doesn't. Ah, hallelujah. Anyway, let's pray. We did get all questions. Yes, we did. We're running tight. We're going over. Sorry, Joe Ryan. <laughs> Sorry, Woody Boy. On 90. <laughs> 90.1 on your FM dial. The mighty Mix FM. We thank you for letting us go along. And I know you're working it out over there. Thank you. We're not doing it intentional, but we got to pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for everyone you brought here, everyone you drew here. Just reach, reach out and touch them, Lord, because you brought them here for a purpose, with purpose, your purpose. You drew them here. Father, heal them, deliver them, set each one of them free. I don't care what they're diagnosed with. I don't care what their lifestyles are. I know you don't either. I don't care what they're addicted to. Lord, break every yoke. Tear down every stronghold right now in the mighty name of Jesus. PTSD, gone. Depression, gone. Anxiety, gone. Cancer, gone. Illness is in your body, gone. In the mighty name of Jesus. Break every chain, Lord. Open up those prison doors and set the captives free by your anointed power, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And those in a dark place, Lord, go in. Light that place up with you. You are the light that men of earth might not stumble. Light that place up, Lord, and grab a hold of them and bring them out in your light that their lives may be filled with you. In Jesus' precious and mighty name we pray. We'll be back. Amen. But until we do, can you do me a favor? Have a wonderful day. A glorious day, a magnificent day, a marvelous day in Christ Jesus, unless you've already made other plans.